Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Center News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a video on the St. Louis Blues Springfield Thunderbirds against the Penguins Wilkes-Barre Scram Penguins series recap as the T-Birds took down the Wilkes-Barre Scram and Penguins three to nothing in this series. Um, as they were able to really just handle Wilkes-Barre really well, limit their goal total, have a very good games in net, um, and that's obviously all you need from the playoffs where Nas is able to continue his great season. Dakota Joshua was able to even pot a goal. Uh, Felix Robert did have his second goal, and then Anthony Angelo continued, or excuse me, Pierre Olivier Joseph, I should say, continued his success as a passer in this playoff in the first game of this postseason as well. Clem Costin as well, who is a guy that I feel like he's one of those slow-developing um, players that still has a, a chance very much so as a former first-round pick of 2017 to be an NHL player. It's just he's not one of those few years out of the draft up and steady in the NHL guys. He might be like he was drafted in 2017 by 2024 or something. Maybe he'll be steady up. I do think he still has a chance. Um, Anas did well in that game, and then when it came to the goaltenders um, in cage, it was Tommy Napier who carried them in the first round and had a very good run, obviously. And then it was also... Uh, Charlie Lindgren, who was one of the better AHL goaltenders the entire season, has been one of the better AHL goaltenders for a while now, and then got that reward from being that to come up to the Blues this year and get a couple of really good games played up there as well because of injuries and such. So I think overall, Charlie Lindgren continued his A-plus season. The man got shellacked in Game 1, uh, had to make 50 saves, but the team that still came out with the win was Springfield, who did not come out with the better performance in Game 1. Wilkes-Barre came out with the better offensive chances and better push of pace offensively. They just made some mistakes defensively that Springfield took advantage of and then was able to defend the lead. And Charlie Lindgren especially was able to defend the lead, playing an absolutely ridiculous game in net. And then the next game... The Thunderbirds come out and win 6-2. to two. The shots are even. The chances, I would say, were about even in that game. And Wilkes-Barre, after coming out strong in Game 1 and dropping it 4-1, to one, seemed to just have no push, no answer, no momentum after that. Well, that was kind of their make-and-break Game 1. It's, t it's weird to say that because these are five-game series, so it is more of a make-or-break sometimes in Game 1. But Game 1 seemed to be their make-or-break where they broke. They weren't able to get the win. Charlie Lindgren carried them over the top. The Thunderbirds took advantage of mistakes. And then the Scranton Penguins were not able to get anything going as Pekka scored in the first. They did show fight back in this game, though, as I would say POJ was one of the MVPs of the playoffs for them. As he was then able to score the leading goal, Will Riley scored the tying goal. So they were able to go up 2-1. to one. So in this game, they did show bounce back. But then after that, after they got their two goals, it was all she wrote. For the works Grand Scram Penguins, as Springfield really turned it on. Then six minutes later, Tommy Cross scored only about a minute. After that, um, Mackenzie uh, McCurchin scored. I have you said I always mispronounce his last name. I apologize. I suck with freaking certain freaking names. And then Nikita Alexandrov was able to score a Joel Hoffer and then Watowski. Um, Wachowski, I should say, as well. So this was a game the Wilkes-Barre Scram Penguins from the perspective were able to battle back, but then the Thunderbirds were able to just have every answer. As soon as they battled back, they got right back into the game. There was no panic. Pekka and Anas were able to get it to cross. Both guys of those two had good series and have had good playoffs as far as well, Pekka and uh, Sam Anas. Um, so I think this Thunderbirds team is just poised, as I said in the beginning of the Calder Cup playoffs, those videos, they seem poised to make a large run here. And obviously taking down Wilkes-Barre, who had a good first round against Hershey, a team that I thought was going to struggle more against Hershey because they didn't have the veteran goaltender, Louis Domingue, who's very good at the AHL level. They didn't. Napier got them through the first round. Not so much in the second round as you're going up against a veteran in Charlie Lindgren. And um, you're not going to be able to get the win. But on back-to-backs, obviously they didn't go up against Charlie Lindgren in Game 2. They went up against Joel Hoffer, but then at the same time, Joel Hoffer, after coming in this year, being a former fourth-round pick from 2018, has actually been absolutely great as a backup goaltender for the Springfield Thunderbirds. He come over from the Utica Comets 
uh, before that, the Rampage, where he didn't have the sexiest season. This year, he put it together big time as a backup, stepped in and did exactly what you want your second string goaltender to do, was able to come in and get you a win and completely keep you in that game, which is exactly what you have to ask from those guys. So hats off and great job by Joel Hoffer. And then in Game 3, talk about a absolute scoring onslaught. Um, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins tried to be able to battle back and get the W in this one as they lost 6-2 to two and 4-1 to one in the first two games, had a few days off on the 13th, 14th, and um, were then back at it on the 16th where they were able to get their goal scoring to wake up. They scored six goals in the game. The problem is the defense and goaltending for Wilkes-Barre Scranton was not able to pull it out in that game. As they started, um, Tommy Napier, Tommy Napier let in a couple goals who probably went back in this game. Overall had an okay series, was definitely good in game two um, for the beginning of the game and then kind of fell off and then was good in game one for most of the game. And then the same uh, kind of held true for this game. He was fine in the first period. Pittsburgh, or Wilkes-Barre Scranton, I should say, Pittsburgh's affiliate, ended up being up by the end of the first, 4-1, to one, and then they really pulled it on in the second, Springfield routed them in the second, and it became 4-4, four to four. and then in the third, they were able to get a goal from Pekka, again, having a great um, season, McCurchin as well, which then um, put them up by two, to then have Poulin come back, put the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins down by one, but then, of course, they went back up again by an extra goal when McKing scored to then Alexander Nylander was able to score 12-34 in and make it a one-goal game. So this was a huge back-and-forth game, but Napier wasn't the sharpest. He was fine early. He could have probably made a couple of those other saves for them. But at the same time, Napier was a rookie, so was DiOrio, and um, so was the other netminder on the roster that obviously they didn't go to because of his lack of experience. But uh, so so was Samuel Harvey, who's... Um, played for the San Jose Barracuda as well and is still trying to figure himself out at the AHL level. So they were kind of screwed in goaltending when it came to Wilkes Barre. I thought overall their playoff run was pretty good. They were able to beat Hershey. I got to give them a B for the overall playoff run. They did get swept by Springfield, but Springfield was the better team. And that showed in this entire series that not just in the regular season, but in the postseason. Uh, the T-Birds were clearly the better team, as that's why they were in second, the most points in the division, in second by points percentage. And Wilkes-Barre was in fourth, tied with the Hershey Bears for the same point total. So I think this was a good series for the T-Birds, a series they're going to get to have extra off days on now because they were able to sweep the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, and a series to build on as a character off season for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins to come back next year having vengeance and having a sour taste in your mouth to want to get that back because they had uh, they had moments where they shouldn't have got swept. Like, for example, Game 3, they were up, they blew a lead. Game 1, they were the more aggressor team, they couldn't finish. So they had good moments in this series, it's just they couldn't prevail. Springfield, though, was the one that had every answer, any knockdown, they got back up again and had every answer for Wilkes-Barre, and that's what put them over the top in the end. This has been a Video on the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins versus Springfield Thunderbirds series. Have a great and safe day, everybody. Peace out. And please do subscribe down below to help us grow to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June.